Guys, we're going to have a great episode today. Before we get into that, I want to thank you guys, the listeners, for all the support that you get. I want to remind you that you can reach out to me on Instagram. If you don't follow, follow it at jscottoutdoors. Uh, feel free to send me a DM. I love uh, corresponding with you guys about your hunts and any questions that you might have. Uh, we're going to have a great episode. I also want to thank uh, the sponsors of this podcast. I want to thank GoHunt.com. Cody Nelson, my friend of 20 plus years, he's the glassing guru, the optics authority. He's the optics manager over there at GoHunt.com at the gear shop. Uh, You can reach out directly uh, for info or for sales at 702-847-8747. You can also email him at optics at GoHunt.com. He also uh, gets texts from uh, my listeners at on his cell phone, 602-399-3699. Feel free to send him a text if you're looking for a certain tripod or binocular or spotting scope or rifle scope, anything to do with optics. Uh, give Cody Nelson a call or a text. I want to thank GoHunt.com also and remind you guys that the GoHunt maps, the mobile app, um, mapping apps, are now available on iTunes and Android. Uh, They have real 3D. Um, It's awesome, awesome 3D mapping on these mobile apps. Uh, You can get a free trial, a seven-day free trial, by going to gohunt.com forward slash jscott. You can also check in the show notes. I'll have it linked up. You get a seven-day free trial. That gives you access to everything in the Insider as well as uh, g- let you look at the, the mapping apps uh, both on the desktop and on your phone. Uh, you can also sign up uh, by going to gohunt.com and just use J. Scott, and that's going to save you $50. Uh, you're actually going to get a GoHunt gift card, $50 GoHunt gift card when you sign up. So go check it out. also want to thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. That's the gear that I wear on all of my hunts. Go to kuiukuyu.com. Uh, to order the gear right there that are direct to consumer model. Uh, so that's the only place you can get the gear, as well as phonescope.com. Use the JScott21 promo code and you're going to get a 10% discount. Uh, guys, let's get right to this episode. And again, thanks for listening. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. We are here at my house in Paradise Valley, Arizona. I'm joined by the glassing guru, Cody Nelson, the optics manager at GoHunt.com. <laughs> Cody, how you doing? I'm good, buddy. How are you? Good to see you. Been a while. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a fun day. And we have Jared Bernstein, with the territory rep for Vortex Optics. Jared, how you doing? Excellent, Jay. Excellent. Thanks for having me again. Good to see you. Seems like we get together in the spring a lot of times and, and do our podcast, uh, talk about Vortex Optics and talk about GoHunt.com. Uh, first and foremost, guys, um, Cody, um, what have you been up to? Um, have you drawn any tags? You got anything you're looking forward you know, to or what's going I've on? Been re- I've been fortunate the last few years and I, I, you're in a dry spell. I'm well, I've, I've started a dry spell, so <laughs> hopefully the deer and the uh, sheep will, will, uh, rebound me. But, uh, yeah, so no, I'm, I'm, you know, I was hoping I got plenty of tags to go on. There's a few guys that draw that drew really good tags so we'll, we'll have some fun with those nice um at go hunt you guys have been just absolutely swamped with um great business and the growth of the company's phenomenal talk a little bit about um your day-to-day with customers and and uh you know the life the day in the life of cody nelson talking on the phone and answering emails and it, texts and everything uh, well it's nothing it, n- no day is ever the same and it w- you know we've been growing and i mean you know, when I go to Vegas, you know, every, you know, couple weeks or every, you know, you know, once a month, um, however, the, however frequent or not frequent that is, I walk in the door and there's a whole group of new people that I haven't even met yet. So um, it's a testament to their commitment to, to keep, you know, pushing and building and growing and, and, uh, and, you know, trying to, to, to make go hunt what it, you know, what it has become. And, and, and the, the best part for me is that I get to hear that back from the customers because, you know, I have direct contact touch every day with the, you know, with the customers and clientele and, and, uh, it's, it's humbling in some ways because it's, you know, they, they, they give you all these compliments and like, you guys are doing it and it's, you know, you try to not stay in your little bubble, but you know, you try to figure out what people want and, and how to provide it. And, uh, and 
since the day that I got there, I know that they've been doing that. Yeah, for sure. Um, talk a little bit about, um, you know, your connection with Vortex and uh, being a big dealer and the partnership that you guys have um, that, you know, obviously you and Jared and you with the company, but how important, you know, having Vortex it, Optics in, well, in your I lineup. Well, c- I can just flat out tell you that if you don't have, and, and I, that if you don't have partnerships like this and, you know, Jared and I have worked together at other places and, and you have to have a partnership with, with your vendors and it is a two way street and there is so much, um, conversation and commitment that goes on both ways. And, um, you you know, if you don't have that, it, it could make it actually kind of really difficult and, and, you know, uh, hard to, to make a buck if that's, you know, that's what you're trying to do. But, um, I, I mean, Jared and Jake and and the entire team at Vortex have been nothing but good to go hunt from day one, and uh, and and we've grown. You know, Jared and I sit back and kind of laugh at what we did, but you know, we we pick the the right skews and we pick the right quantities and you put them all together, and it's it's just amazing to watch the ecom business do what it does. And and you know, we, we it took us a couple couple seasons to get it right, and I think we've got a really you know solid mix right now and. And you know we've got we we've got some fun stuff you know coming and and we'll just keep doing that because it once you start that and once you you prove to each other that you're you're both on the same team and you're trying to help each other out it's the success is amazing yeah um, Jared uh, you with Vortex Optics um, how long have you been with the company now I have been in the Arizona New Mexico territory since 2015. So, so you've seen an amazing seven amount of growth with Vortex Optics. Talk a little bit about how the company's doing and how you're doing with uh, repping them and, and how they kind of fit into your day-to-day. For sure, yeah. Uh, you know, along the same lines of what Cody said, Vortex's growth uh, since I've been with them is is incredible. Uh, scary is almost a word. I mean, it's just incredible. And, and it speaks to the people, speaks to the reaction, it speaks to the... Uh, the pure passion that, that comes out of that building there in Wisconsin and, and the desire to listen to the customer. If there's one thing I can say about Vortex over any other company uh, in the industry that I that I have intimate knowledge of is the true uh, understanding of listening to and then taking action on what the consumer has to say. And I, I think that's, that's just a massive... Um, speak to the people that that we have in positions of authority and, and positions of influence and, and like cody mentioned you know with go hunt same thing i was at go hunt the other day and i'm walking around lost because the building's new and people's offices move and, and all that and it's the same story at same story at vortex I, I make it back there once or twice a year and and there'll be a, a whole new indoor range built or a new retail space built for for swag and hats and and uh, it's just amazing to see what people can do when they when they work as a team and when they when they all have kind of a common goal. So no, I, I feel super blessed to be out here in the West. Obviously I have a passion for the, for the West and hunting out West. And, and so uh, it's a very, very neat train. I feel blessed to have a seat on. Awesome. That's fantastic. Uh, you personally, um, how did, did you go on any hunts last fall, last winter? Um, how did you do? Do you have anything coming up this fall that you're looking at specifically or anything going on? Last fall, I had an Arizona archery bull tag that I struck out on rough hunt all all sorts of weird stuff between blown clutches on side by sides to uh guys in razors driving up on bulls while I'm at full draw to just all sorts of stuff went on in that unit that public land that, you know, it was a, <laughs> yeah it was a um it was one of those hunts where you drive away feeling thankful that you got the hunt but you just say like you know what that unit's off my list now <laughs> and you're yeah. just frustrated but um, it was a, it was an interesting one, uh, helped a couple of friends kill bulls in nine toward, uh, closer to Thanksgiving on late rifle. That was fun. And then, uh, in January headed south of the border, uh, for my first, uh, international coos hunt. And that was, that was an absolute blast. We, we like it. I loved it. I loved it. It Isn't was it uh, incredible. That was, it wasn't a place I would take my wife, but it was a, uh, it was a phenomenal boys trip and we, uh, I hope we, we had a great it. time. We had That's a great time. Shot a great buck too. Did. Yeah. He's just over 128. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Um, bomber talk about, uh, what gear you used on that hunt. Um, as far as vortex optics on that hunt. Yeah, for sure. So I had a, uh, a razor LHT four and a half to 22 
uh, on top of my Ruffs Precision uh, 6.5 PRC and uh, fired one shot in country. It was 801 yards and, and we were done. So it was uh, it was awesome. That that LHT did a good job. I shot that buck at sunset, and it was just a there was a lot of things as always. There's things working against you uh, when it comes to the environment, and that thing performed very very well. I um, was happy to have the locking turret when we were bushwhacking and everything else. Um, happy to have the the magnification range and that objective size. Did, Do you use the MOA or MRAD? That was MOA. Nice. Yeah. And as far as optics, what did you use for glassing down there? So I was carrying Razor UHD 18s in my pack uh, for using on a tripod. Um, had a friend carrying a spotter, and then I had uh, Razor HD 12 by 50s on my chest, just for that. Those couple times where we we ended up canyon to canyon to canyon, and we dropped packs, and you're taking just a tripod and. Yeah. Those those Razor 12s are a great option to go on a tripod, but also still stable enough in the hand, small enough to wear on the chest, not not too cumbersome. So we were using uh, that was kind of the that was kind of the thought process down there. I had a set of Razor 8s with me too, HD 8s. Carried them the first day. Decided I wanted the 12s because of the kind of country and, and switched over for day two nice. through seven. Uh, ran with the 12s and the 18s. Nice. Talk a little bit about your background in the military and how that kind of goes into your day and day-to-day business with Vortex, whether it be from an operational standpoint, a discipline standpoint. How do you kind of use your background and training to make you do what you do? I think the biggest the biggest thing the military helps people do when they get out of the military is understand how to work on a team, um, how to how to understand that my strengths are my strengths and your strengths are your strengths and together we can go accomplish something whereas if i downplay your strengths and try to be mr tough guy on things i'm not good at then neither one of us are going to get anywhere so um i enjoy the teams i get to work with right i have to i have to rely on on inside people at vortex and warranty folks and shipping folks and then on the outside i have to rely on cody and right and so we all have our piece of the pie I think that's probably the number one thing the military taught me was that you you think you're alone, you're going to be alone. If you think you're the best, you're going to be alone. Right. And if you can if you can work as a team and and everyone exploit each other's strengths and help each other with the weaknesses, you can go a whole lot further. Um, a my, collective my game, effort. It you is, help. and it is, and you know, you're. I talk to, I don't know, on a slow day, I probably talk to forty people, right? That's a lot of interaction, and that's a lot of chances to either let your ego get in the way or not. Sure. And, and so I would say that's probably the number one thing. Sure. Guys, we've got a bunch of questions here. I kind of want to dive into them. It's great to have you both here. Let's just dive into these questions. Uh, first question is uh, difference in glass being used for UHD razors compared to Vipers. So I feel like we need a button where like I hit it and it dings <laughs> and then I answer the question. <laughs> you hit it and then I sit here and you play it. We'd have some bloopers on that <laughs> one. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you're, you're basically talking about uh, the, the prisms are different. Number one, that, that it's the Abbey Koenig prism versus the knot. So, um, you know, if you want to talk to the, to the actual coatings and, and that stuff, but um, they're, they're, you know, I mean, the UHDs, when Vortex came out with those, they, they, you know, that's always, there's always been this thing about the big three, you know, and Zeiss like and whatever, and, and, and Swarovski and, and, and these other groups have been pushing at those for so long and, and, and progressively they've all gotten better. And, uh, the UHDs are, in my opinion, I mean, they're, I mean, they're just, they're, they're a fantastic piece of glass. And if we're sitting there glassing together and, you're not going to miss much with them. The edge to edge clarity is awesome. The, the, the low light performance is good on them. I mean, it's, I, you know, for the price and where, where they fall, there's, they're just a fantastic piece of glass. So I always like to compare things to, to vehicles. It's something we all typically abla, um, you know, Cody hit on the, (laughs) on the UHD thing, having the Abbey Koenig prism, and that's an incredible step forward. Um, a Ferrari is a phenomenal vehicle. It doesn't always mean the Ferrari is the right tool for that job. And, I, right. and I'm not downplaying the UHD and I'm not downplaying a Ferrari. But, you know, for the guy that says, hey, I, I do X amount of miles and, and I just I'm cutting weight 
and and all these things, the Razer HD Bino still has its place exactly. uh, because of and you know same thing. When we were in Mexico, the the UHD series, there's an eight and a ten and a twelve, and I carried the Razer HD twelve, and I obviously had access to all of them, but I carried the Razer HD twelve because I was balancing weight and size and performance. You know that Abbey Koenig Prism is is phenomenal from an optic standpoint. It's also to get to that standpoint, it is a larger piece it is a heavier piece and uh, which is okay on a tripod it's actually better right we, we like that well but it I, doesn't i get know. the question all the time about the you know the 1042 you know uhds and i'm still of the opinion that the the hd is one of my favorite pieces mm -hmm. that the 1042 hd because it's it's smaller lightweight you know and, and small in the chest and I, i've just always really liked that and i and i sometimes value the 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 smaller package and the and and the weight savings and the size savings over you know just the 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 better glass in that particular scenario and i think I it's i see it you know as an archery guy holding a, a uhd with one hand while i'm holding my bow there's a time limit to that there's an extended time where i can right. hold a lighter piece right um I, and truth, you know, truth be told, the UHDs, I buy myself time. I can usually get behind a UHD 10 or 15 minutes in the morning before I'm getting behind a Razor HD. What's the trade-off? What's the, what's the pro-con list, right. right? And so I think they both have their place. I use, I use both a lot. Um, you know, on the tripod, I'm a UHD. Got to be UHD because I've spent hours behind them, and you can see the difference. Yeah. You can feel the difference in, in your eyes. So it's a... Yep. Uh, and UHD stands for uh, ultra high definition. Ultra is the the yeah, It's, it's yeah. ultra. Um, next question: Razer UHD twelve versus HD twelve pros and cons. Kind of what we were just talking about. Right along the same thing. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're a tripod only application, and you can spring for a UHD, it is a better piece of glass yes. optically. No doubt about it. Agreed. Um, the HD my opinion, more rounded. If you're only going to be able to buy one, you're going to enjoy an HD on your chest more than a UHD in certain scenarios. Uh, well, it's and, just and smaller and lighter. It's all there the is other to thing it. to think about too is everybody has a different price point. For sure. And, and the, you know, within the Vortex line, there's different structures of price point. And yep. someone say, you know, say, I just need something for around my chest, banging around, you know, riding in the Ranger or whatever. And I'm going to go with an HD as far instead of a UHD, or then I'm going to have the UHDs for something where more stationary or more, you know, sitting up on a point in glass and mm -hmm. or what have you, right? Yep. Right, and it, and it all, you know, it depends on environment as well. What are you looking at? Right. You know, what do you, what are you doing with them? I mean, there's there's so many features to each one, so many different applications to each one. I mean, we could switch this conversation around to birding, and and our conversation is totally different, right? Or right. Or honestly, I'm getting a ton of stuff with law enforcement where guys on, on vehicle task force are like, hey, I need to be able to read a license plate quickly at X distance. Right. Well, that's a different parameter than I'm trying to see. Is that a 100-inch buck or a 120-inch buck at 500? It's or you're deal. in right. the Midwest or back, say, in the southeast where you don't have to see as far. You just kind of want something to be able to pull up and kind of classify, okay, is that a buck or not? Mm -hmm. You might go with an HD as, and instead of using the UHD in that scenario. Absolutely, or or you know, again, I mean, we can we can argue it till we're blue in the face. It may be vice versa because you're looking for the best optical quality quickly, and then you're done. There's 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 arguments to be made both ways. Yep, for sure. Okay, question here: um, If I'm near Vortex headquarters, can I visit? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, it's getting like we, we kind of talked about already. It's getting more, more impressive and more, uh, welcoming by the day. The, and where is it? The move, uh, it's in Barneveld, Wisconsin. So if you're anywhere in the Madison area, you'd be within stone's throw of it. Uh, I want to say 35 minutes or something like that from Madison, but, um, yeah, yeah there's, there's a, a retail, uh, space, which is, you, you know, t-shirts and hats and sweatshirts. You can't, you can't buy optics there. You can certainly demo anything you want. There's, I don't know, probably 30 or 40 tripods set up with, with optics on them where you can look out over the Barneveld uh, landscape there and, and very often find turkeys or, or a plethora of birds and, and every now and then deer. I, um, I haven't been yet, but like Brady was just 
kind of blown away by the whole thing. It, it's an amazing showroom, and then now he, we have. He was like, I str- he's like, I strongly recommend it. You know, going and and, and I know I'm a, a, a you know a, a partner, but yeah. but if I was a general public, I'd want to go walk in there. Yeah, and I stop by, out. and there's there's coffee, and and then there's uh, and then we have the whole vortex vortex edge side that's being stood up, which is a whole training side and and the new ranges are extremely impressive and and all that stuff can be can be toured and checked out so it's awesome it's uh it's quite impressive question here uh viper hslr or hst for western hunting um and then a kind of a side note any gen 2 coming in the hs line um so we don't we don't release info on new product until it's public. So I'm not going to go any new product question is going to get the same answer uh, on that deal. I would go HSLR for the capped windage turret. Mm-hmm. Um, side by sides, trucks carrying in a pack, bouncing off a tree, f- you know, windage, having, having that capped windage turret is extremely valuable. Um, the other thing I like about the HSLR series is there's a six to 24 first focal plane scope in that series. Yep. Um, and that scope ex- is extremely unique in our line because it's first focal plane has a windage related Christmas tree type reticle. Yep. You still get the capped windage, but you're getting uh, you're getting a lighter package because it's not illuminated. So depending on what your set of needs or parameters are, you may not want the illumination. You may not have the budget for the illumination, or you may not want to carry the weight of the illumination and the turret that goes along, uh, or excuse me, the the construction that goes along with that. So um, it's a pr- it's a pretty unique scope. It's one I've hunted with a ton uh, when I when I need something lightweight. And and prior to the the Razor LHT coming out, which when we talk lightweight and glass quality, I always go there. If that's not in the budget or, or there's just something about that reticle that's not liked, the HSLR is a phenomenal option to look at as well. Agreed. Do all Vortex binoculars come with a bino harness chest rig? Yes. We do now. Yeah, what, uh, yeah that would have started 21, right? Gen- January yeah, 1, 21, something like that. They and, all you know, the, the UHD has its own. The the HDs has its own. There's a couple. Is it the HDs and the Vipers the, that are the same? Yeah, the HD and below should all be the same. Yeah. And then the UHD has a, a w- what we call a premium uh, bino harness or, or chest rig, however you want to refer to it. Let's talk. Um, there's a question here on Vortex tripods. Um and it's it's saying if I'm six foot, uh, best vortex tripod to use standing. I'm six foot one. Okay. So um, yeah. So but also talk about the rest of the vortex tripod line because you guys have expanded that, right? We have. Yeah, we have. So to answer the question directly, the Ridge View uh, would be my number one pick for you. Uh, it's a carbon fiber tripod. I conveniently am also six one. So uh, kudos to whoever wrote that question, but. Um, I stand and really, you're five eleven at that point because that's where your eyes are. Sure, so. sure. Good um, point. Well, no, I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, it's just people nice. always like, oh, I'm six three, and I'm like, well, actually, you're, we're going to go to six. Well, and they, yeah, so it's that's well, the his sales forehead's side of a little higher, so I'd say five <laughs> yeah. eleven and a like half. <laughs> well, I just and then and then the the only other thing I'd say to this guy, you know, is he using binos or is he using a spotter or, or, or a an angled angle, spotter because yeah. the angled spotter is always going to be lower, so. But that ridge view gets gets very tall, yep. um, so that would be my number one number one pick for that. And and the beauty is with that ridge view, the legs go so far down and out that that you can still sit or even lay behind and can right. a spotter and, and have a ton of options. Um, th- that's that's really gonna be the number one. The High Country is going to be a much l- uh, more budget friendly tripod. It is not carbon fiber. Um, so it's it going to be heavier, probably. It is going to be heavier, and it it will get uh, right up to there. Yeah, uh, you w- you will be able to use it. It does not go quite as high as a ridge it'll view. Be close, uh, but something like if you're looking at our website, the summit is not going to get you uh, yeah. standing. That is a that is a sitting or at worst so kneeling more type of a backpacking mi- micro, you know, yep. smaller weight. Yeah. Yep. One thing I find interesting about Vortex is they seem to really understand and get it as far as having their own tripod lines, meaning it, you know, well, I, I mean, I can more and more people using the vortex tripod. That so tells me that they're kind of figuring out that that's an important part of I a lot can, of the Western hunting. Talk about that. Well, because you know, we, I've worked with vortex long enough to know and the people involved with that. And, you know, I'll talk about Mark and Paul and, and, you know, they were going on Western hunts and 
I think that that idea and those that you know that you know creation was was coming from coming out west, um, and uh, and I think it was pretty pretty evident a while back that that was where they were going and and there was going to be a revamp and and they've done really good and the and the the heads um, the heads have been a solid sale the 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 uh, you know the Arca Swiss you know switching to Arca Swiss mm-hmm. I mean. It, they're making it so that you can use a lot of different pieces, parts, and 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 tripods, and and making it a system. And I think that's the that was the the biggest thing that they needed to do. And and, and you know I love the twist locks on the uh, on the on the new tripods, and they do a, they do a, a fantastic job with that. And so they're they sell pretty good. And then, you pretty know, one strong. Th- one thing I hear a lot at, at events too, even some guys that don't use our binoculars. Um, is hitting on the fact that the tripods take a beating, yep. and they want to they want they want to have that warranty behind them for for whatever happens. You know, a lot of guys carry tripods either in their hand or on the outside of a pack when you're dropping or you're moving or you're falling. Right, these things are taking abuse or they're bouncing around on a side by side. And tripods, as you guys both know, take an absolute pounding. And so having you know, you're going to pay four or five hundred bucks for a carbon fiber tripod. Be awfully nice to not have to replace it every single season and. Quite frankly, if you're hunting hard enough, a good chance you're you're doing some damage to a tripod. So, have you seen and do you feel like be, having high quality tripod has really helped Vortex in general by gaining new customers? Uh, in, in other words, customers that understand that Vortex knows and understands that that's an important piece of the puzzle. It, it caught me off guard having multiple folks at different dealer events come to tell me, "Hey." My my dad passed me down a set of, you know, Swaro 15s, but I use your tripod and here's why. And they do. They always hit on the twist locks yep. um, and, and they always hit on the warranty. And so I, I, I found that very interesting. I didn't see that coming, to be perfectly honest. I didn't think that that product would pull in a new crowd, um, calling a spade a spade. But it, it's it's been a very interesting, very interesting feedback. And, and I run into them in the field quite a bit. It's it's uh, which is cool. Yeah, so from the sounds of it, you, there's interchangeable parts that you could have a vortex head on another set of legs. You could have a set of legs, uh, and you can you can kind of move it around a little bit. You, you could. Uh, I don't find well, they, that guys are pulling heads off. Head. Our, ours do come with a head, and we don't sell them without a head, to be gotcha. honest. So I'm seeing the packages used the way we sell it. Right. Uh, but the uh, but it, it seems we're drawing in new well, customers and, just to just and, for the tripod. And now you've got the matching parts for. Um, for window mounts Mm -hmm. so you know the same head that you're using on your tripod would be the same head that you're using on a window mount um same plates and so everything's you know super interchangeable and and convenient for the for the consumer for sure do any vortex scopes come with replacement turret that shows yardage we don't ship uh, any scopes with a replacement turret. What we do on the Razer LHT series, they come with a voucher where you can send in your data, and then you will be sent right. back a a tape that will that will fit that turret, which would then give you yardage. So send with a turret, no. Send with a solution to that, yes. In the Razer uh, Razer HD LHT line. Right. Question here, um, it's asking about the tripods, going back to the tripods, it's asking how the adapters, um, how all of, all of that fits within the binos as far as, do you have your own adapter system? How does all that work? Well, so you have, look, so if you're using either the sport binocular adapter or the, the pro binocular adapter, um, you know, each of those has a, a, a quarter 20 thread on the bottom and you're, 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 uh, uh, attaching the, the uh, Arca Swiss plate to the bottom of that. And that allows you to go to, to any of the Arca Swiss heads, but the, the heads are, are slotted for our, you know, Arca Swiss compatible plates. So it, it works. Okay. And as far as like the stud in within the Bino, does um, Vortex have their own stud? Uh, they have their own stud and it's uh it's a little bit different design. It's, it doesn't necessarily have like a locking, channel but it's more splined if is that the word to 
to yeah, not use a, that. Not a channel, but the splines well, yeah. do, do lock it. And what you'll find is, you know, depending on the how level your tripod is, Correct. you may have to move one spline over, which is as simple as loosening the top piece, which is very easy, and just canning your bind a little bit, tighten it back down. So you have yeah. adjustability on the angles. And then the other side of that is you can make it on an extreme angle if you wanted to. Uh, have some options there. and you can buy extra studs to put them in you know all your different binoculars so that works out real well for western hunting specifically coos deer hunting what would your setup be with vortex optics from binos spotting scope to rival scope so i you know there's and that's it's a interesting question because there's always anatomy involved in whether or not you enjoy looking through a spotter some guys can't look through a spotter, can't close their eye, get a headache, all that stuff. Um, I personally prefer 18s. So we were talking about my coos hunt. I had 18s on a tripod and 12s on my chest and that Razor LHT uh, four and a half to 22 on my rifle. Uh, but there is definitely, uh, especially in coos country, always a need for, for a spotter. Um, and we had a Razor 85 millimeter uh, yeah, ang my, angled with us. My, my setup would, would, would definitely be, I do the Furies. In the 10 to 42, uh, you know, ABs, um, I do an 1856 without a doubt and, and do the, uh, you know, I would probably opt for, um, you know, the 65, uh, you know, uh, uh, razor spotters. So if I, if I was going to do a system like that, that's, that's what I would go to. Um, I, and if I wasn't going fury on my chest, then I would go, um, then I would go with the 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 Razor HD uh, ten by forty twos. That'd probably be my my go to. Uh, when is Vortex? Oh, and as far as the scope goes, um, I love the the LHT three to fifteen to forty two, and typically I you know I like lightweight you know uh, rifles, and that kind of fits that bill. What would you say is your best seller cody or one that people ask for the most in that um ha hands down the lht it's the most popular scope we have selling right now in which which um it's a it's a it's a razor uh it's a razor hd well it's a razor lht but it's a 3 to 15 by 42 um and it's you know it's got a single dot reticle that's i mean it's as simple as it gets and um i mean it just does an incredible job Sell, sell them by the boatload. And then there's also a four and a half to twenty two in that right. series uh, by fifty. If you, you know, if you were looking for yeah. more for more magnification, same same feature if, set. If you want a more, and, and I would say that if you're just, and I love that, that, and that's a new scope, and and we have some great content coming on that, by the way, and um, that four and a half kind of puts you into having the same bells and whistles as as a lot of the heavy, bigger tactical scopes. But yet it's not as big and as heavy as a lot of the tactical scopes. It kind of, for me, it fits like that middle of the road. It, it's a feature um, pack scope. Yeah, you no, get, it's got, got push a button ton illumination involved with it for uh, sure. You know, center dot push button illumination, which first is first focal plane. You get the first focal plane option. Um, you know, the the reticles are extremely simple but extremely usable. Yep. Uh, you get a locking elevation turret. So it's it's a. Uh, it's an incredibly feature pack scope. And when you start looking at, you know, it's always hard. I, I honestly wish when you went in to buy these things, there was just a spreadsheet where you could see all the features and everybody's weights and everybody's, you know, and just very quickly without having to say, okay, well, is that one? Is this one? But when you look at that scope on a spreadsheet, it, it stands out. And it's, you know, when you start looking at, at weight and cost and warranty and, and glass quality, and it's, it's a, uh, that thing is a hammer. It does yes, a great sir. job. I agree. A very lightweight hammer. Yeah. So. Is that also um, been very well received throughout all of um, Vortex vendors? You know, obviously Cody's a lot out here in the West, and and is, but other parts of the country has that scope, you know, been a big seller. Uh, it is. There's there's certainly pockets to do better with it, right? That's a scope that requires uh, the individual selling it to understand the feature set, understand the customer's needs, and then put those two together. So, you know, you get a guy that, that sits in a tree stand and he may not care that much about, you know, shaving a couple ounces or having having a little bit better quality because he's not staring uh, through the scope quite as long. He's not worried about a fatigue as much. It, it's just a different deal. Yeah, um, it, it, and it just – and it depends too because you get that same guy that he'll, he'll describe what Jared, Jared just said and he's like, but I want to go to the next – you know that next step and that 
And that's where, you know, when you start explaining all those bells and whistles on that particular scope, it, it's kind of hard for them not to. They're like, well, I don't, you know, some guys just don't, some guys are intimidated, first of all, by the big tactical scopes. And, and, and I think that sometimes when you can present them with a package like that, that's got all the bells and whistles, but it's in a little bit lighter weight and, 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 you know, that they don't have to have a 10, 11, 12 pound rifle to put it on and, and I think that's uh, that's what it does. Would you say, Cody, the uh, the uh, bigger amount of calls that you get are for people that want something that's simple and easy to use, or do you have more people that are wanting real tactical, you know, I, real complex? I it, it runs the gamut, but I can tell you that I, I would I, I would say that you know people call up. And they say, I want to I, I wanna build a long-range rifle, or I'm building a long-range rifle. And, and so a lot of times you'll, you'll hear that, and you start, okay, what's your definition of long-range? Right. So I, I just immediately ask those kind of questions because I want to understand what rifle are you building? What, you know, you know how heavy is it? What, because some guys will go, well, you know, if I build a tiny lightweight rifle, I can put a giant scope. And then other guys are like, no, I, I want to build a lightweight rifle and put a lightweight scope on it. So I just try to ask questions to kind of sift through all that. And the interesting thing to me, Jay, is that I hear probably more than anything that, hey, look, I may want to shoot a thousand yards at steel, but I'll never shoot past five, six, seven hundred yards, kind of a deal. That I I hear that probably overwhelming amount. That that hey, I just I normally I can fire out to five hundred pretty good, but I just want to stretch it a little bit. And I, I think that's the people that come to 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 us the most. What would you say um, when you look at the Vortex rifle scope line? What would you say? For you, Cody, is like you're like one, two, three. What people want the most? You mean just it, just in terms of the the numbers. lines or yeah. the lines or numbers? Like, what are they looking for? Um, you know, generally speaking, uh, uh, I, I would tell you that they're looking for something in between four and twenty power. Um, I think they're looking. Most people are looking for a fifty millimeter bell. Um, they want they want turrets. Um, I can't remember the last time that I had somebody ask, you know, actually ask for, you know, just lines only, you know, like a bullet Standard drop compensator. Or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, and they do, some guys do, and some guys just want to make it simple, but, um, but yeah, like in terms of that, that, that's what I, I think people ask for more is they, they, they want just a little bit more power. They want to, they, they want as much light as they can get and they, and they, they do it in a, uh, in a fairly simple you know, kind of non. I, I don't. I don't like to bash on the tactical stuff, but that's the, the, A lot of guys just don't want to go that big heavy route. So that's probably the the number one questions that I get, or requests, I should say. Got a question here? Is the UHD price worth it? Yeah. I think I, it goes I, I, back to what you were I, saying, though. Is it <coughs> what is your what is your use? You know, but I think, it, I, but I, yeah. but I think it goes back to even to. I mean, I've been saying this for years and years and years. Buy the best class you can afford. Put it on a tripod and slow down. So I would just tell somebody that if if that is where your limit or where you want to be, I absolutely think it's you know worth it to push to the next level. Um, I'll admit it. I, I can be an optic snob, and I just like better glass. And so I'll tell you right now that if you've got the the Vipers and you're gonna, you know, go between, you know, uh, like say a Kai Bab at a UHD. For me personally, I'm going to the UHD. Yeah. It, it's it's worth it to me. I'll take the best glass. And I, and I would argue, you put a UHD next to the other big competitors on the market and start again back to that spreadsheet concept and compare me. You you'd be hard pressed to tell me that the UHD doesn't perform or doesn't run. Um, Edge to edge, weight, price, warranty. There's a lot of things to consider. Ease of use on a tripod, tripod adapter availability, right? All yep. those things. You start checking those boxes, and and uh, the UHD runs. It, it runs in the top. Well, the, and that's what I, you know, I, I guess I was trying to drive home earlier too, is that you know, 
we have all these options that we didn't have years ago and it, it and we just keep making them more yep. available and better and and more accessible to people and that's that's the best part question here um turkey season what uh turf turkey shotgun scope should i use we're seeing a ton of, of viper red dots and venom red dots uh and and razor red dots for that matter uh the micros being being used on shotguns a ton um actually you'll even see it a lot more popping up in our imagery that we're using in catalogs and and it's just becoming interesting a monster market not only for turkey but like predator hunting turkey hunting absolutely yeah the, the predator we see a lot of guys in the predator world go into something like an lvpo a low a low variable power optic a one to four a one to six to give them some options for you know when we're calling coyotes and they hold up at 250 300 it's a lot easier at four but power they, than it but is they also done. want that i they can need turn it down shot. and it's it you know it's yep. 20 yards away so that they'll do a lot of that for sure yep. and you know within those dots those series feature a 3 and a 6 MOA option based on your eyesight or, or what you prefer you know so it's a, uh, a pretty pretty wide line to be able to find a solution for somebody with for a turkey gun not a question on here but a question that I have Vortex also has um, a lot of tactical stuff for handguns tactical you know guns of you know, self-defense guns, all of that. That's a whole nother department, right? Um, no. So those those Viper and Venoms and Razors that we just talked about in the in the micro type dots are, are the same product line. Okay. And they and they transfer between the two very yep. different markets extremely well. You know, and they and they all have different feature sets. The the Vipers a little bit lower profile, a little bit different window, uh, you know, field of view shape. Um, the Razor has different coatings and provides a, a better piece of glass. Uh, the Venom features a top load battery where some guys get a little upset about having to unbolt an optic to swap a battery, whereas that can be changed without, without in theory, affecting a zero. Although I will tell you, having taken Vipers off and put them back on, changed batteries in the bathroom of a CVS kind of thing, and I have never had a, uh, <laughs> never had a, a zero issue. They repeat very well. The mounting system is extremely solid. But some guys just can't get past the having to take it off and that means that it's not where I left it and so sure. the venom is a the venom is a phenomenal option for that for that customer. Apparently Jared's no longer welcome in any of the local CVS's <laughs> <No, laughs> <we're good. laughs> Hey you know, what is he doing in there? You carry I don't know, a, he's uh, been there a while. When you when you carry a red dot and you learn to shoot a red dot on your everyday carry and you get used to it and then you look down and the dot's not on you, you, you go to CVS melt. and you get a battery oh, and you yeah, go in the bathroom and you change that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, question here: uh, Have a spring bear hunt. Which spotting scope would you recommend? And binos. So you know, it doesn't our, say which state. Yeah, uh, and that's I, where I was going to go. The the spotting scope thing can be interesting because we make a really lightweight eleven to thirty three yep. backpacker type compact spotting scope, which is awesome for the guy that's going to go ten twelve miles with the thing on his back. I personally don't enjoy hiking around with a spotter. Um, if you're going to sit in an area you're willing to carry the weight. Like Cody always says, buy the best piece of glass you can get. The best spotter we make is the Razor HD. Yep. Uh, the 85 angled is always my personal choice. But And there's a lot of people just choosing the 18s, right? I mean, I have a ton of people that are making that call of like, okay, do I get the spotter? And it comes back to I, they hate looking with one eye open, and it drives them nuts. And they, they, just, they would rather look at 18 power and have a little less uh, uh, magnification and... They, they, f and I think what people, uh, the, the, the overwhelming message back to us is, is I've seen more game by doing that than I've seen any other style of hunting that we've done. And, and again, it comes back to that, you know, put it on a tripod and slow down. And I think of the more that, you know, people understand and accept that, that way of doing it, I think they'll be floored with how much game they actually see. It's, it, happens I, I can't even begin to tell you the number of phone calls or, or messages i get back like hey man that was the best thing i ever did so in other words if someone called you up and said i want to either invest in a good pair of binoculars or a good spotting scope but i can't do both you would overwhelmingly say get the best binos you can afford and start there well and, and there's some other qualifying questions that we ask but but my thing is is if I had a nickel for every time a guy from the East said, I'm going out with my 10s and I'm buying a tripod and a spotter. And the minute that I hear tripod and spotter, I'm like, well, hey, have you ever thought about mounting your, your binos? And they're like, why would you do that? Right. 
And I would say, well, I, I, I mean, I, it just completely flips the conversation. And, and I would tell you that it, it's overwhelming that the, the guys coming from the East automatically think they have to have a spotting scope. And look, if that's your way and you put your ten, like at the bare minimum, put your t- if you're going to hunt with tens at a spotting scope, at least learn to put your tens on a spotting or I mean on a tripod. Have the option. And well, have what the you're option. saying is it's not even ingrained in their brain. Oh, it's n- not even. They're, no. they're thinking they're going to nope. hand glass, hand hold with 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 the binos, yep. and then once they find something, then they're going to pull out their tripod it, and get the spotting scope. It's out. A, it's overwhelming the amount of people that call and, and want that want to do that. And so you would say, well, time out just a second. Let's get you a tripod and a spotting scope, but let's also get you a way to adapt your binos. Yeah, to because a if tripod, you're going to spend, let's just tripod. say you spend two grand on the other stuff. You know, another seventy bucks for for a pro bino adapter. I mean, the, the, it, and and quite frankly, I think the bino adapter exponentially just increase your chances to find more game. So you would be fine I mean, saying, really? stick with the tens, but let's get it on a tripod. Yep. Let's get you a spotter. Go for it. Yep. Well, you okay. know, it doesn't get talked about a lot, too. And, I, like, I'm a guy that carries 18s. That's my tripod optic. I carry tens or 12s, depending on where I am. That's my chest optic. But what doesn't get talked about a lot is, like, 620 in the morning, the tens are way better on a tripod than yep. 18s no, or it, a spotter. It, it's, he's so right. you're, you're gathering, you're gaining time in the day at those key points in the day, and you're gaining time at night, the key point in the night, whether you're just trying to figure out where something's going to bed or whatever you're doing, and, and having tens on a tripod with a giant field of view with a big, bright, exit people you're gaining that ability you're gaining whether i don't care what 18 or 15 or spotter you're carrying i mean those those early morning you know moments you know we had bulls right up underneath this this last year and 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 i'm with the eights i'm like oh you know next and it's it's great that he's so close in the dark in the no it's, i'm in literally the in the dark yep. and i can see full blown that this is not a bull that we're we're shooting and i don't even call attention to it because my eyes are now fixed somewhere else and and other guys are like can you can, you know is there a bull right? yeah i mean yes there's right. a bull right yep. there but he's not it, it was not what we're looking for you know f- like keep looking somewhere else I've done it. So Even, you know, where tens, you know, another scenario that might make sense for people is walking into a water hole and you're going to go sit a blind and you're trying to check, you're checking and checking and checking on your way in. And you can start, you can start picking stuff up with tens or eights before yep. you're ever going to see it with, agreed, with something bigger. And so there's, there's something to be said for, yeah, I, 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 I just think if guys, if they, if they just get their, I don't care, I don't care if it's a, like an old pair of sixes. Just get them on a tripod. Yeah. You'll be amazed at what you it, it 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 not only you know by virtue of of eye fatigue and um and field of view and even if you used a pair of eights on a tripod, I, I just don't. People just don't. It it it, it exponentially uh, increases the effectiveness of that binocular and the distance that you can see um, clearly. I'll give you one more scenario that we like to use tens on or eights on a tripod versus the the fifteens or eighteens is when someone's about to take a shot. Oh, like calling an impact with an eighteen is really nice. Yes, you smoked him. I saw it hit behind the shoulder. <laughs> You're good. You know what else is really nice? Having a field of view that's giant and being able to see yep. either a where it fell down or b where he ran to. Right. And so there's you know when we have that luxury, I love tens for the shot. Love it to have somebody on tens because your field of view and your awareness is is much larger. I agree. So, just something else to think about. Back to that bear question, and I'll kind of help this person that's asking the question break it into two things, Jared. Um, one, let's say it's an Arizona spring bear hunter that's probably going to be op- hunting a little bit more open, you know, more glassable country. Mm-hmm. Compare that to maybe someone up in Montana or, or you know, or Oregon, Northern California, some of that stuff where potentially – it's going to be thicker, more timbered, maybe walking, logging roads. What would be your go-to, you know, say binos? Maybe you wouldn't even use a spotting scope in that thicker environment. You talk about those two scenarios, what you would use. Yeah, I think if, if it was a super wide open unit, I, I would, depending on the, the amount of canyons and stuff that I had to traverse, um, if I didn't think I was going to have to do some wild death hike, I'd use an 85 millimeter spotter and either a, a 1042 or that Razor 1250 on my chest. Um, honestly, if I'm going into the timber, I'm not taking a spotter. 
Um, a, because I don't need the weight. B, I need to be as agile as possible. We're stepping over things. We're crawling right. under things. We're st- right. So um, I, I would honestly be on Cody's team with the 842s in the timber. Now, you know, having the option or buying new binos for every hunt is hard, um, which is why I think a lot of guys land on a 1042 chest binocular because it really right. is a do-all package. Yep. Um, and a 1042 on a bear hunt in the wide open would absolutely be fine, right? You're going to see a large... That that's a large animal with a distinct color. You're gonna you're gonna have effectiveness with that unit. Um, so in a perfect world, those would be my my choices. Honestly, I think you could go into both with a 1042 on your chest and be Do cook. Fine. You'd be cooking with peanut oil for yeah. sure. Okay, uh, best vortex uh, spotter under a thousand dollars. Well, the Viper. I, I like the Viper in that case. Um, I know somebody would probably think that the you know they'd have to throw the the eleven to thirty three in there, but I I think you're going to get so much larger exit pupil and light to your eye, you know, with a viper that I I think that would be the for me that would be the obvious choice. It is more uses for it. Yeah, whereas an eleven to thirty three in a small it, package is it's, that, it's, it's kind of like the stubby yeah, screwdriver. Yeah, I agree. When you need it, you need it. It's great. It has its very very you know it has a lot of uses, but they're Doesn't, somewhat more specific than a yeah. full size spotter. Doesn't quite have the torque that the lunch. <laughs> yeah, it's just a different deal, right? I mean, you 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 can have a you got riding lawnmowers, you got push lawnmowers. I mean, what are, what are we doing here, and what's what's the most yep. effective? Uh, is Vortex coming out with big eyes? Uh, again, <laughs> same same new product question. It's it's very. Uh, I, I enjoy paying my mortgage and feeding my kid, and talking about new product outside of release dates is not something. I can. I'm, he, here's what I can say about it. Would you like to see that, it come out with big that eyes? conversation? I I would love to has, see it. Has been had as a request several times. From customers or from well, you? Well, from customers, from myself. Reps. From, from, <laughs> I mean, employees. whatever. Yeah, oh it, yeah. I mean, I yeah. know that it's out there, and I know that, you know, there are people that are, um, you know, putting big guys together and, you know, big guys. It's, uh, I mean, it, it's been around for a very long time. You know, and it's funny because uh, the question came up of, you know, remember David Miller, the, the you know, the, the gunsmith from yeah. down south that, you know, killed all those great big. There was a thing on Facebook the other day, and, and it, man, it brought back a lot of memories because it made me think of big eyes, right? So, and David Miller was actually one of the, the in, in, if all my memory serves me correctly, and I'm sure somebody let me know if I got this screwed up, but David Miller... I called him once because he had a pair of, I think it was Bushnell Space Master 20 or 25 to 50 binos that were on a, on its own bracket, and it had a center drive. You remember the old center drive, you know, like tripod, tripod raised gear, sh- you know, gear, yeah. geared, you know, center posts? And I called him, and he talked to me for 40 minutes about the deal, and, and I'll, I'll never forget that, and, you know, it really didn't take off and gain popularity but you know that was i don't know that's 25 that was 30 maybe years 30 ago. years ago right and man it was pretty cool and uh you know there's been you know there's been a lot of those things but you know we've seen i've seen people put the uh razor 65s uh the straights uh, on a a a, a bracket I, I mean there's been i mean there's certainly it's, there's kind of this thing out there, you know. I mean, you know, the Coas and the Doctor Optics and all those big companies did it, and you know, Swarovski's got the BTX now, and I, I think it would be pretty awesome to, you know, to see a, uh, you know, I don't know what it would be, but if it was a razor, fantastic. I think you know the best glass you can put on there, and and you know have that. 25 to 60 or 25 to four, whatever it winds up being, I think that would be incredible. And I think we could sell them. Cody's best all-around Vortex binocular and Jared's best all-around Vortex binocular. Doesn't say it, just all around. Uh, I, I'm, I mean, and I think I've said it earlier, is if I just had to pick just one, it's tough for me because my my gut tells me to go to the 18 UHDs because I'm I'm always glassing from a tripod and but I, there's just something about the 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 second I guess it would be second gen 
Razer HD 10 by 42s. It would be a tough close up or call between those two, and and I would or toss up and and I would probably uh, on that level I would go to the 1042s if I just had to pick just one and go do everything with it. Jared, I'd be in that same Razer HD series, but in the 1250. I've carried that thing on my chest all over the world. It has done me phenomenal. Um, yep. And you know I I carry a I get to you know fortunate and blessed to carry a pelican case full of everything we make and when i start doing you know weight and size and i mean when it comes to tripod glassing again i i, I crave a uhd there's no doubt about it but if you're telling me i can fight with one right and you can you pick one gun the rest of your life i'll take a glock 19 i'll, I'll take the i'll take the razor hd yeah it, it's such a i mean i mean i don't know i just I don't like being corralled into one piece I of don't either, <laughs> making you sweat <laughs> the well, so, man. You know, one we hunt all over you the gotta place give you right? more than one I mean I've had weeks where I hunt Georgia and, and Arizona in the same week you know it, it's it's a very different game uh, both both of those things or, or you know go to Africa and, and well that's it's a blessing but if you're hunting overseas now you're worried about weight or flying somewhere in Alaska weight's a concern how many can I take what can I carry what do I want to hump around it's it's a you know there's so many things to go into we're just blessed to have you know cases full of this stuff to to use but yeah absolutely um jared it's been awesome having you here cody i want to give you a chance guys uh any final thoughts here um any concluding thoughts um with go hunt with vortex or anything you want to say you know i would i would just tell people that if you have questions call me um if it's something we don't have if it's something we can't answer i mean jared and i sometimes are connected at the ear by phone or text and um you know we have we have good product uh, in 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 vortex right now and they've been they've been crushing it for us on that on that forefront and and doing a great job and um yeah i would just tell people that you know it now's the time to kind of do the research and 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 put the pedal to the metal and get that stuff going and you know don't wait wait till last minute so um yeah i just i appreciate the opportunity to come and do this and I love having Jared here, and it, I think they're in for, you know, for people that are truly looking for kind of groundwork level, you know, answers. This is what it is. Jared? Yeah, I can, all I can do is echo the echo the thank you uh, to both of you, right, for the, for the time here on the, on the podcast, Jay. Thank you. Having us in your home, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty uh, high gesture, letting that happen. And, and uh, you Although know, I, I try not to compliment Cody too much, especially when a lot of people are going <laughs> to hear, but... Uh, vor vortex and go hunts relationships extremely strong and and that is a lot to do with the two of us and and uh, it's a great it's a great relationship it's a great working relationship that has evolved into a friendship and, and that's all you can really ask for well it's great having both of you here i know the listeners will get a lot of uh, good value out of uh, getting their questions answered uh, i want to tell the listeners out there thanks for tuning in and if you have any uh, questions feel free to send them to me and we can cover them on a future podcast and uh, thanks for all of the support. Guys, great having you both here. God Jay, bless both of you. Thank you for doing what you do. Appreciate it, sir. All right. Take care.